What is up, everybody? Barracon here on the very first episode of the Big Screen Barracon podcast. I am super excited. This is something that I've wanted to do for a while with this platform, and I'm glad to finally be doing it. This is a weekly release thing, so there will be a new episode every week. Sometimes there will be more, depending on the situation. Uh, we may do episodes that include reviews of new movies. We may drop episodes that are only about a review of a specific movie. For example, I think next week uh, Lightyear is coming out, and so Lightyear will probably get its own episode, which I'm very excited for. I actually grabbed my tickets for that movie this morning, so that's that's really exciting. But I am I'm just excited to be doing this. And again, it's going to be myself. Sometimes I'll have a guest host with me. Hopefully more often than not, I'll actually have a guest host with me. It just depends on schedules and the content that we're looking to put out that week. As well as we may be interviewing some really cool guest stars as well. So I'm really excited about that. There might be, this isn't confirmed, but there might be some really cool opportunities at the Dallas Fan Expo. Some things are in the works. We'll see if it happens. I'm not getting my hopes up because there's a very real chance it doesn't happen. But if it does, you're going to want to be subscribed to the Big Screen Barrack on TikTok, YouTube, and of course this podcast because we will have some exciting things to come. But yeah, again, like I've been saying, I'm really happy to do this. And really, it's a good chance to just talk about the things I love, the movies I love, the shows I love, the things I'm looking forward to, interacting with you guys, answering some of your questions, and really giving you guys a space to get to know me as well, which I think is really important. You know, I've been very active on Instagram and Twitter following everyone um, just because I want to be part of this community. I don't want to be just a face in the community. I want to be a active member of the community. I want to get to know you guys. You know, I appreciate that you, you all take the time and follow me on TikTok and you guys are starting to branch out to other platforms like YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and hopefully this podcast. And I really, like I said, I really appreciate that. And I just want to take the time to get to know you as a thank you. I never, I never wanted to be this crazy, exciting thing. If I replied your comment, I want that to be the norm. So that's kind of the goal that I have for my platform. And that's something I'm going to continue to try to do. And again, this podcast is a good opportunity to connect with you guys and talk with you guys and answer some questions you have. Uh, and so I will answer a couple questions that some of you guys already sent me, which I really appreciate. But this episode is not going to be the most exciting episode. It's just kind of an introductory uh, to me, to the podcast, and, you know, just getting some house cleaning out the way. But yeah, again, my name is Bear Condenser. I am a TikTok creator uh, under the name Big Screen Bear Con. Although I wasn't always a TikTok creator, I was an actor first. Uh, and then a writer as well, but I just dove into TikTok and here I am. <laughs> I don't understand the following I have. I know it's not the craziest thing in the world compared to other creators, but I nonetheless did not think it would it would happen. I mean, I remember being just completely shocked to have 10,000 followers and now at almost 160,000 followers is just insane to me. Even on YouTube, I think we're at 7.5K subscribers. I was celebrating like nuts when I had 500 subscribers. So this is pretty insane. Um, I'm just gonna keep rolling. I'm gonna keep going, keep doing my best. So I appreciate that you guys actually listen to me. Uh, that's a cool, weird feeling. But yeah, it's definitely been an exciting time. So a little bit about me, if you guys haven't heard or seen anything I've done on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram. Again, my name is Bear Condenser. I am a creator, I was an actor first, I'm still an actor, uh, as well as I do write as well, but that's a very, very hard industry to crack into, uh, but I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing my best. <laughs> but I am a creator, my favorite movies, and this is, I feel like, the best way to get to know me if you don't know me. My favorite movies are Spider-Man No Way Home, I know it's a cliche, which is kind of weird to say it's a cliche considering the movie's only been out for seven months. But it's become so big that it is kind of a cliche to say it's your favorite movie. But genuinely, I have pure joy every time I see it. So Spider-Man Away Home is my favorite movie. And behind that is Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Now for me, when I judge a movie, when I say a movie is my favorite, it's it really comes down to how many times can I watch this movie and not be tired of it. And not think to myself, oh, can we just get past this boring part and get to the part I really like. 
And then another big part of it is, for me, first impressions are everything. So the first time I see a movie really plays into how I feel about the movie later. So if I have a really fun memory attached to seeing a movie, I'm going to love that movie forever. <laughs> it's just how it is. I mean, I will never forget the reaction of uh, seeing Spider-Man No Way Home and sitting there with my wife, my best friends, and all of us just reacting. I've never seen it that way to where we're all reacting the same level or at the same level. And even my wife was just, just her jaw like dropped. That was the first movie my wife ever went to see like three times in theaters. Usually she's one and done. But that first night there was something just really special about seeing it and our theater was crazy. So that's something I'll remember forever. And Star Wars Revenge of the Sith is really important to me because I was like six years old, right? And obviously Revenge of the Sith is crazy. It's dramatic, it's insane. There's some memes in there, but when you're six, you don't really care about that. Um, or at least back then in 2005, 2006, you didn't really care about that. I remember I, at, I went to my dad Thursday and I said, dad, tomorrow at school, everyone's gonna be talking about Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. And we didn't see it tonight on its opening night. And I don't want the movie to be ruined for me and I don't wanna feel left out. And my dad basically was like, okay, son, I'll see what I can do. And so the next morning I woke up and my dad <laughs> had said, Hey, I called your school and you're not going, you're not going, you're sick today. And I looked at my dad, I'm like, but I'm not sick. I'm perfectly fine. He looked at me again. He said, Bearcon, you are sick. Now go get dressed because we're going to go see Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. And that was the first time my dad ever pulled me out of school. I say first time because it had ha it has happened a few times after that, but that was the first time my dad's ever pulled me out of school to just go spend a day at the movies watching something we were both really excited for. Uh, and that's really something special. So on top of the fact that I think Star Wars Revenge of the Sith is a fantastic movie, I have such a core, nostalgic, loving memory with my dad seeing that movie for the first time. So I don't think that movie will ever really get out of my top three. It's in my top two right now, but I don't ever see it getting out of my top three ever in the future. So that's why Star Wars Revenge of Sith is my favorite, is one of my favorite movies and definitely my favorite piece of Star Wars content. It's also the first movie I've ever seen multiple times in the theaters that at least I was aware of when I was little before that, like three, four, five, my dad would have to, would take me to see movies again and again. Like I'm pretty sure I saw Spider-Man uh, starting Tobey Maguire multiple times, like five times in theaters, but that's only because I kept falling asleep because I was young. I couldn't hand, I couldn't, my attention span couldn't handle it, but I kept falling asleep. So the only way for me to really retain the movie and to see it in full is if I um, went to go multiple times and just fell asleep at different parts of the movie. So that's why. <laughs> so before Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, that was the only reason I'd see a movie multiple times. Star Wars Revenge of the Sith was the first time that I ever seen a movie and was like, oh my gosh, I have to go see this again in theaters. I cannot wait for it to come out to DVD. That was cool. And fun fact, the very first movie I ever went to in theaters that I did not fall asleep in was Stuart Little 2. <laughs> Full circle moment. The la I really like Star Wars Force Awakens because... That was another movie. I was a senior in high school and my dad, I remember I had my first period off of the day. So I already slept in the whole entire school year. But I remember I woke up and my dad said, hey, don't go to school for your second class. I told them you had the flu. And I literally looked at my dad and I said, well, why did you tell them I have the flu? I, and I said, is this because of Star Wars? Because our movie ticket is at 7.15. I don't have to skip school to go see this movie. And he was like, no, you don't understand. You have to skip school not to see the movie, to wait in line for the movie and hold our spots so that we can get a good seat. Because that was literally months before AMC Cinemark, they all went to the assigned seating format. So my dad literally called me out of school so I can go sit by myself at AMC Theater. I was literally third in line. So to my dad's credit, he was right. There was a line forming, but I literally sat there for eight hours by myself until my dad got off work uh, t to come meet me at the theater so that we can have a good seat. And we did, we had the best seat in that IMAX theater. So it was worth it. 
but it was just funny. And, you know, my dad did bring me some Sonic, you know, fast food uh, chain down here in the South. My dad did bring me some Sonic. I had some good mozzarella sticks, so I was compensated for my time. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's kind of a little bit about me and how I value the movie going experience and how it really affects how I feel about a movie. And, and, and to say that it's important to note that if I'm don't, if I'm not really feeling the theater going experience, like if the audience is dead, like if it's a brand new Marvel movie, that's a good example. And the audience is dead. It's not going to take away from the movie for me. You know, the movie going experience only enhances a movie for me. So if I have a lot of fun seeing the movie, uh, with the people around me, that only enhances it. But if it's just, if I'm seeing the movie by myself, it's not going to mean, it doesn't mean that the movie was bad or it took away from the movie in any way, shape, or form. Just to make that clear. Now, again, I, I said this wasn't going to be a typical episode. It's not going to be the typical length of an episode. It is just a introductory house cleaning type. So I'm just going to go straight into answering a couple questions that you guys sent me over Instagram. The first question why or how did I get into TikTok? Why did I start doing TikTok? Really, I started, I remember I was, it was Thanksgiving break. I was sitting at home. It was my junior year of college. This was 2019. Uh, and like, I knew of TikTok. I had TikTok. I was watching it, but I wasn't like obsessed with it. And then this girl who's at my house, she was a childhood friend. Um, and so our families were having dinner and she looked at me and she goes, you know, you'd actually probably do really well on TikTok if you tried, like if you tried making TikToks, you'd probably do well. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to take you up on that. I'm going to give it my best. And so I tried and I didn't really have success. I'm not the funniest guy out there. So I wasn't really, you know, making people laugh and having people like follow me because of that. I wasn't, you know, like a I'm not like a dancer. I'm an average looking guy. So I wasn't getting followers because of that or anything like that. You know, it, for a few months, it was just kind of dead. And then COVID hit, everything shut down. And there was literally nothing but TikTok for a good while. And so I kind of explored some avenues. And I did, I did this whole scheme of, uh, you know, let's break the world record for the most followers in 24 hours. And so my personal at Bear Cundy official account on TikTok skyrocketed from like 100 to 40,000 followers, which was crazy. Uh, and that was like in a matter of a month. Uh, but it didn't really stick after that. Like no one really followed me for my content. So my TikTok died pretty quickly. And so I was like, well, I'm kind of, I mean, it was fun for a little bit, but I'm kind of done with it. And then my wife and I fast forward, we moved in together. We have this brand new puppy my wife and I were like, let's make a TikTok account for, actually it was my mother-in-law's idea. They are like, you guys should make a TikTok account for your puppy. You know, people love that. And so I did it. And again, I kind of did another scheme except that was like, hey, for every like you guys give this video, I will give my puppy a treat. Or for every thousand followers, I will give my puppy a new toy. And next thing I knew we had 40,000 followers on that account and I had four, I bought 40 new toys for my puppy, uh, all of which were destroyed in like a week, by the way. And that was crazy. But again, I, I, my heart wasn't in it. I didn't like the idea that I was constantly following my puppy around with a camera and I wasn't really enjoying the time while spending with my puppy. So I, I kind of stopped doing that. And like every once in a while for fun, I'll go back on that account. Maybe I'll upload something, but it's definitely not something I think about really anymore. And so after that, I was just kind of like, you know what? I like TikTok. I like creating videos, but I don't know if it's just a lot of time and a lot of effort. And again, my priority has always been being an actor and being a writer. And so that's what I wanted to focus on. But then I started noticing something. I started noticing that I was getting a lot of auditions and a lot of good auditions too for some pretty big projects, but it didn't, it wasn't working out. It wasn't, I wasn't able to get over the hump. I'd get a callback, but I was never able to book. But it wasn't because I was a bad actor because all these casting directors would keep emailing me, keep emailing my agent and keep getting me to audition. I just, 
couldn't get over the hump for whatever reason. And I have a pretty strong suspicion it's because I'm, and this is an industry term, I'm too green. So I'm too new of a face. No one wants to really commit to me yet. And that kind of asks the question, well, how am I ever not going to be green if I keep getting rejected because I'm too green? And so that's when I kind of was like, well, maybe, you know, social media content creation, maybe that's my path to not being green anymore to where studios and networks and producers and whatever will be more comfortable rolling with me. So I really thought about, I was like, you know what, I need to dive back into TikTok and I need to take it a little bit more seriously. And this was about October, November of 2021. And I had another account that I was doing just kind of for fun. It wasn't really going anywhere, but it was called Everything on Disney Plus. And my challenge was I was going to try to watch everything on Disney Plus. Didn't get very far. I got up to like 20 something movies and then I kind of, I got tired and it just life happened. And I, I worked full time in addition to all this still. So timing was a little bit hard, but I basically was like, Hey, you know what? I have this channel. I have this platform. It's not the craziest in following. But the foundation of it is something I love. I do love watching Disney movies. I do love talking about Disney movies. And I know there's a real audience for people who like talking about pop culture and movies and things that are upcoming. I was like, you know what, maybe I can, maybe I can explore that. You know, I never thought that maybe people would want to listen to me, but maybe I can try my best and dive into it. And that's kind of what I did. Started out talking just about Spider-Man Way Home, a movie that I was so excited and I was already saying it was the most anticipated movie of my life because at that time I was aware of the rumors of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire being in the movie and that thought alone so there's already some genuine passion there so I started talking about Spider-Man No Way Home I gave some release I gave some trailer release predictions movie ticket predictions and that those were my first real videos to kind of blow up and it didn't, I got a lot of people like attacked me for being wrong, you know, it was just guesses, but I, I took that as a positive and I was like, okay, let me have some fun for this. So I, I did things like eating the world's hottest chip because I let you guys down and told you guys the wrong trailer date, which by the way, I could still kind of feel that was in November and I could still feel the heat from that chip and it was terrible. It was the worst day of my life. But I started doing that. I started talking about the movie more and I started talking more about Marvel, Star Wars, and it just kept going from there. I wasn't consistent yet. And then January 1st, I told myself, okay, January 1st, 2022, I'm really going to embrace being a TikTok creator and I'm going to give it everything I've got. I'm going to pump out content like no one's business. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to give myself the best chance. I originally started doing TikTok because someone said I'd be good at it. I then started doing it because I didn't want to be green anymore. Now I found out that I really love creating on this app. I love interacting with the people on this app. So I want to fully commit to that and honor that. So January 1st, 2022, I said, I'm going full out and I'm going for this. I'm doing everything I can and nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to give it my best shot. January 1st, I had my first, well, December 31st, January 1st, I had my first million viewed video. And I just kept going from there. I kept posting. It was, there's days where I posted 20 things a day. I posted 20 videos a day for like a week. I usually try to do at least five to 10 anyway. I was going nuts. I was posting everything I can. I didn't hesitate. And I made some mistakes because I didn't hesitate, but I, I learned from them and everything like that. But essentially, that is how I got started with TikTok and that is why I started doing TikTok. That's the long, full autobiography on my TikTok journey to, to where, I, where I am here today. Question number two. Did I meet Martin Sheen while filming 12 Mighty Orphans? Ah, yes. So 12 Mighty Orphans was a football movie that released a year ago today. Not a year ago this week, actually, in theaters starring Luke Wilson, Martin Sheen, uh, Wayne Knight, Rob Duvall is in it. Just an incredible cast. Jake Austin Walker. A lot of really incredible people. A really incredible young group of guys who also had never been in anything before. And that was really cool to be a part of. You know, I wasn't... I played Daniel in the film. It wasn't like a main character or supporting character. It was just a featured role. I was originally only supposed to be an extra for one day. And then I got incredibly lucky. And they're like, hey, play Daniel be work with us for about a month 
uh, and work closely with the main cast. So yes, I did meet Martin Sheen. I worked pretty closely with him at the time that I was on set. It was incredible. Martin Sheen is probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. He didn't care that I was just a featured character. He didn't care that I didn't have any lines. He still made an effort to get to know me, asked me how my day was. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. So when I'm sitting here on set, too nervous to talk to Martin Sheen, I'm sitting here on set, I'm like, you know what, I'm not gonna bother him. I'm just gonna work with him and let it be and just enjoy that moment. So when I tell you I'm sitting here on set on base camp where all the trailers are playing with a football playing catch with some of the other guys and Martin Sheen walks up to me and says hey I can't I'm probably not good at throwing but I can do my best to play catch with you guys if you want and then Martin Sheen proceeds to play catch with me I was speechless I really was I mean I was sitting to myself I'm like oh my gosh play it cool you're just throwing a football around with Uncle Ben Play it cool. Yes, I did meet Martin Sheen. He was the nicest person. And you know what? It wasn't just me. Even if you were an extra uh, and you were only on set for one day, he did make an effort to go out to all of them, say hello, uh, and just make their days. Because, you know, you spend a lot of time just waiting around. And when you're an extra, you don't have a trailer. You don't have these nicer facilities. You know, you're all in a room together just waiting. And the fact that he went out of his way to talk with everybody, say hello, that was really cool. And that's something I really, really respect. And if I ever, ever am blessed to get on the same type of level as Martin Sheen in my career, that is something I hope I can do as well, just because I saw how that impacted everyone around him. And I think that just incredible. For Christmas this past year, my in-laws did something really cool because I didn't want to take a picture. I didn't want to like an autograph or anything like that. I was always told that that was kind of a bad thing to do. Uh, and again, I did work with them pretty closely, but I didn't want to ruin it by saying, hey, can I get a picture with you? Because it was my first film set. I didn't want to do anything wrong. So I didn't have a picture or a keepsake with Martin or anything like that. I just have the memories of working with him and, of course, the film. However, this past uh, Christmas, my in-laws got me something pretty cool. Uh, they got me this head, which I then put a Spider-Man mask on because, you know, I had to. But they also got me this... 1930s type football helmet that says 12 my orphans and is signed by martin sheen um it's authenticating everything like that but that is pretty special so i do have a keepsake and of course i have to put the helmet on a spider-man masked head because you know he will always be uncle ben um so that was really cool and that's it everybody that is the first episode of big screen bear Con. again lengths are to be determined it's going to be longer than this for sure, but I just wanted to get out here, introduce myself, introduce the podcast to you guys. They say thank you so much for all the support you guys give me. I'm looking forward to doing this with you, and I hope that you subscribe, download, tune in. It's going to be a great time. Let's do this.